for what you're asking for Stop stepping on my constitution The one our soldiers are fighting for They came along with all this hope and change But now America may never be the same I want my country back Under God, indivisible liberty. When the only thing that mattered was the truth to set you free, I want my country back. Yeah, I want my country back. Too much political correctness. Just trying to change who we are. Somehow intended to protect us But now it's going way too far They sit around and occupy the streets While the rest of us work hard to make ends meet I want my country back the way it used to be When the most important things in life was faith and family Nation under God, indivisible liberty. When the only thing that mattered was the truth that set you free, I want my country back. Yeah, I want my country back. They don't want fences on the border, but they got their fences in the yard. No, they don't want to talk to strangers No, they don't want to work that hard I want my country back The way it used to be When the most important things in life Was faith and family When nation under God Indivisible liberty When the only thing My country back the way it used to be when the most important thing in life was faith and family with nation under God in the visible liberty when the only thing that mattered was the truth that set you free. I want my country back. Yeah, I want my country back. Oh, yeah. 
yourself by the way that you pull me. I'm gonna get lucky tonight. I wouldn't trade a minute, darling, for the memories made tonight. And the diamonds that shine in your heart. Conley, my eyes are only on you, and before that, Tina Gibson, between the two of you. And I hope you enjoyed the interview that I had with Carrie Hare, and I'll be rebroadcasting that later on tonight. And we have got on the line with us, which is such a busy, busy Monday morning, you know. Uh, we've got Arnold Conley on the line with us. Arnold, how are you? Good morning, Phil. Glad to be on the show today on the Black Dog Morning Show, WAKK 94.7 FM in Ringo, Georgia. Thank you for inviting me. Well, you're quite welcome. Thank you for coming on. You know, you are my listener. I think you're listener number five out of the 12 that I've got. You know, everybody tells me I've got more than 12, but I don't believe them, so I'll just No, wait a minute. You said 14 a while ago. You said maybe 14, you know, someday. Okay. <laughs> May, uh, on a good day, that's 14. So I, if I've got somebody <laughs> good, I mean, like today, because you're on, uh, today I might have 14 because, you know, two people who like you might have actually heard that you're going to be on the show, and so they're tuning in to hear that but then as soon as you're not on the show anymore they're not going to listen anymore so i've got oh, come i'll on. stick i'll stick with my 12 listeners all right <laughs> <laughs> okay you stick with 12 it'll be all right <laughs> you know everybody tells me few. well you know everybody tells me you know you should you should really you know isn't there a way that you can find out how many people listen and i'm like yes there is and they're like, well, how come you don't do that? And I'm like, because I'm either going to be extremely disappointed or I'm going to be very happy. And it's it's going to be one of those two. There's no middle ground. So it's either I'm going to be, I'm going to find out I've actually got more than 12 listeners or I'm going to find out I don't even have 12. So, yeah, I, <laughs> we'll just keep it right where it's at because ignorance is bliss. This is true. Yes. And... Is uh, how what's been going on with you? You know, you and I we talk every day, and um, you listen every day, and you even listen on Saturday nights to the Saturday nights I come. Well, absolutely. I mean, you've got the best one of the best radio shows out there, and we got to be friends uh, back in October of 2017, if you yeah. recall. And uh, that was the first time I was on the show, and you did. Uh, you were one of the first radio stations to broadcast me. Um, the Cowboy Dance was the first song. Well, actually, My Eyes Are On You was the first song I believe you played, the song you just played there, and then The Cowboy Dance. And, um, you know, that was just the start of a great relationship. So, you know, since 2017, uh, October, I've done. I've been very busy, Phil. Um, 2018, my goal was to go back to the studio and do a full album. And uh, I also play in a band called Fire on the Wire, so you'll see on my Facebook page a lot I'm doing Fire on the Wire and Arnold Connolly. Arnold Connolly is my solo stuff in Nashville, and Fire on the Wire is kind of my country rockabilly stuff that I do here up here in New Jersey. I'm, a, I'm from New Jersey. I'm living in New Jersey, but I'm from Kentucky. 
But uh, so I, I did a, a full album, and I called Here I Am in Nashville. I guess it was March and April. I did that, and then I went in the studio right after that and did a record with Fire on the Wire in New Jersey, uh, with, and we did an album up here. And so I had two albums released last year and uh, just been promoting those pretty heavily. And uh, it's funny, uh, I've been so busy. After I got done with the record in Nashville, the studio called me and uh, asked me if I'd like to become a partner with them. So uh, I, guess, I don't know anything about uh, recording music. I mean, that's why I went to the studio, let them do their job. But long and short of it, I uh, became a partner with Music Valley Recording Studios in Nashville on a Good Friday, actually. And uh, so that's been very, very exciting. And as we went on through the year, uh, we picked up another partner. Uh, his name is Andy Dixon. And uh, he's, got a, he's involved with Hollywood. He's got a movie out called Heart Baby. And uh, it's crazy because in November I got a chance to go to a red carpet event in New York City to, to see the, the premiere of that movie. And so we've got a lot of exciting stuff going on. Uh, Barry Wayne's producer down It's Barry Wayne. Uh, Andy Dixon, myself, and you know, Madonna's in there too, and uh, we're all just, you know, trying to keep things rolling down in Nashville and have a lot of fun. And uh, had some artists come down from New Jersey to record with us last summer, uh, which was pretty cool. So, man, I've been real, really busy, uh, along with my day job, which is mining. I mine rock. I'm Fred Flintstone. I do that for a living. So, been pretty busy, man. <laughs> you are. You are, and you know, you've shown me pictures of the big trucks and all the equipment that you use in the mines and one of these days you'll make it out to where i'm at in georgia yeah well Maybe. yeah yeah i feel you know our uh, it's funny i haven't been down there yet because i kind of figured i'd be down there between now and then uh we have our headquarters in atlanta and um you know i plan on when we when i get a chance to get down that way i will definitely come by and swing swing by and see I, I get to kentucky quite often but i get down to nashville but I, usually my time is limited I just go ahead and make a loop going down to Chattanooga and see you, you know? See, I used to tell everybody that I was from Georgia. And everybody, first question they would all ask me is, oh, so what's Atlanta like? And I'm like, couldn't tell you, never been there. And they're like, yeah, but you live in, you live in Georgia. I'm like, Georgia's a big state. And so well, absolutely. The, or else they would say, hey, do you know so-and-so? And I'm like, no, should I? Well, yeah, they live in North Georgia, and I'm like, uh, you know, it's a big area here. There's there's more than 10 people living here. So now I just tell everybody that I'm just outside of Chattanooga because everyone knows where Chattanooga is, and it makes it a lot easier and a lot easier for me to tell people where I'm from. So, Well, you know, Phil, the cool thing for me is I know the general area because I lived in Georgia 10 years myself. Uh, being in the mining business, I, I started coal mining in southern Illinois, did deep mining in southern Illinois, eastern Kentucky, east Tennessee, started got in the rock industry in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we had quarries up around your neck of the woods, and I worked in uh, Tyrone, which is near Peachtree City, Forest Park by the airport, Columbus, Griffin, uh, spent a year in Auburn, Alabama, um, got up to New Jersey. Uh, what happened was my company was bought out, so I got transferred to Kentucky, we got bought out. I knew somebody in New Jersey needed a job. I've been up in New Jersey now 10 years to life, believe really that. And uh, I know it's hard to believe. I never thought I'd, I'd ever, get, ever get above the Mason-Dixon line, but here I am, you know. So New Jersey and New York area. I'm in the New York City area now. So, But I do know the general area where you're at. And uh, you're right. There's more than 10 people in your area. <laughs> yes, there are. Yes, there are. Um So you've got some exciting things going on. And, you know, I think it's great that you bought in with the you know that you went in with the recording studio and because it's just going to help all the indie artists out there considering that you're an indie artist and all the people you know are indie artists so it's it's a great thing and it's all it's all designed to help get people's music out there and get them heard well absolutely and that's that's kind of the the approach i mean we're a studio where dreams come true we like to classify ourselves as, and I'm an indie artist, like you say, so I understand the struggles. And we are in, in the, you know, we're in the best location, in my opinion. Of course, it's my opinion in Nashville. We're right behind. Uh, you get off uh, Riley Parkway and you go down and make a left to go to the Opry Hotel. We're right across the street, so you, I mean, you can't get a better location than that. Behind the Nashville Palace, Music City Bar and Grill, you got the Texas Troop Corps Theater, and and it's just an awesome location. Um, good 
safe area. Um, you know, plenty of hotels. You know, we got a, a special rate one of the hotels there. Somebody comes in and records with us, and uh, I get it. I, I truly do. And uh, you know, uh, we're reasonably priced. We have every all the musicians, the studio musicians that play with us. Almost all of us play the Opry, the Grand Ole Opry. So what you get that that song you just played there, uh, Ronnie McDowell Jr. was on there. Tim Atwood, who's out on a cruise right now, he's the piano player. You got. Eugene Moles, who was the lead guitar player on there, he played with Merle Haggard. Uh, Anthony Valentine on bass. Eddie Lang, which plays that, you know, he's still on there, which is awesome. Uh, Barry Wayne was the producer of that song. And LaDonna Brewer Caps, who written, wrote songs for uh, Conway Twitty, and, you know, she's friends with Joni. And, you know, Barry's written songs for, like, George Jones. One of the songs that Jay Michaels does was actually a George Jones song, but George Jones didn't get a chance to record it before he passed. Uh, so that's the that's the quality of the studio, and that's just want people to understand that. And if it wasn't for Barry and LaDonna, I wouldn't even be interested in it because it's really in, over my head. <laughs> I mean, still, I've only been doing this since July 5th, 2017, and uh, in a year and a half, I've had a lot happen for you know for me, and I'm grateful for that. But I, I'm you know I'm trying to help myself as well as help others around me. Nobody really cares about you until they know how much you care about them. Well, this and is uh, I'm sincere in saying that. <clears throat> It's a it's a tough business. I mean, the music business is it's tough. <laughs> and it's um, it's the kind of business that it'll chew you up and spit you out without blinking an eye. You're absolutely right about that. And you know, I'm fortunate. You know, if I was just starting into it, I'd I'd be starving to death, man. I mean, you, I'd be. What do you say? You lick uh, rocks for nutrition? That's lick it, yes. You know, so. Um, you know, I've got a mining job, and I've been doing this job, I was thinking about it the other day, 27 years. I started in mining. I'm 19 years old. I'm 46 now. And uh, is that right? I think that's right. I'm over, <laughs> over 20 years in mining. And uh, I've been fortunate because, you know, the things I have acquired, it's been not through music at all. It's been through just blood, sweat, and tears, you know. And um, it's tough. The, mining, the, the music business is tough. And people say all the time, are you going to quit mining? I said, no. I said, that's. You know, I'm mining the music. They kind of go hand in hand. I, I love both of them. I'm passionate about both of them, you know. And um, now, am I leaning more towards music currently? Yeah, I mean, it's exciting. You know, I haven't, who gets this opportunity? It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And so I'm trying to kind of balance both of them, you know. <clears throat> well, plus you need, the, you need the mining in order to be able to support the music. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You, sh you sure do. And, and, you know, through that, you know, I'm a, I, I write, as you know, I write a lot of songs. And uh, ever, somebody's asked before, how many songs have I written? Well, I don't really know, to be honest. Maybe a couple hundred. I don't know. Um, but, you know, the mining aspect also, living real life, you're outside the music world, you get inspired to write, at least I do. And how I typically write is I kind of set up, I mean, some. I was coming up from Kentucky yesterday. I, I spent some time down there and, uh, I got some lyrics kind of in my head, so I kind of talked into my phone, like you mentioned once before in your show. But generally what I try to do is on Saturday, right before your sock hop, <laughs> I usually take a nap. <laughs> I usually take a nap, and then I get up, and uh, as soon as I get up, I, I usually got I, the first thing that comes to my mind, I either start writing, or I got the tune in my head, and I write a song. And then I quickly put it on my phone and, and upload it to YouTube. Not because it's really that great of a song. Sometimes they are. But so I can go back later and look at it and, you know, dress it up or see if that might be something I want to take to the studio. Because, you know, yes, I have a studio, but I still have to pay for musicians. I still have to pay for engineers. And, you know, it still costs money. Just because you have the studio doesn't mean it's, you know, it's not going to cost you something to go and record. It's, and it's not cheap. You know, it's not it's expensive, or it can be. So, you know, um, that's how I do it. You know, that's how I, I, I write music and lyrics and, and everything. <laughs> well, I just think it's, you know, the... Like I always say, I have nothing but the best respect for songwriters because you guys have an ability that not many people have. You have the ability to tell a story in four minutes or less and make it relevant, whereas, you know, it's something you're born knowing how to do. I mean, you can learn how to hone your skills and how to do it better, but the basic gist of being able to write a song, that's a God-given talent. And you can look at you're absolutely I mean, right. You could look at a puddle of water and come up with three different songs about that puddle of water, or most people would just say, "Yep, puddle of water." 
So it's <laughs> it's a God given talent, and it's something that you need to. I mean, I don't know. I think that artists in general are tend to be a little on the weird side anyway, <laughs> and songwriters tend to be even weirder. So, and I'm I'm one of you, so I'm I'm right up there in the weirdness uh, scale. So, yeah. <laughs> that's why we love you, Bill. I mean, you know, you make. You, I think you said something. You ain't got a filter. Well, that's okay. We love you anyway. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, I was born without a filter. What what comes in my mind comes out of my mouth. Most people they stop and think, "Should I really say that?" And I'm like, "Nope. If I'm thinking it, I'm saying it." <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that's why we love you, man. I mean, uh, we, you know, as an indie artist, and I, I think I speak for everybody out there. First off, I want to say thank you so much for given us, indie artists, and indie country in particular, an opportunity or a platform to be heard not only locally in northern Georgia and, you know, eastern Tennessee, but also around the world with your app, WAKradio.com. And, you know, that's, that's how I listen to you all the time. I mean, I, I listen to you as I'm traveling back and forth. You know, I have a home. The coolest thing about me, I have a home in western Kentucky, two hours northwest of Nashville, and I have a home up here in New Jersey. So the studio works out great. You know, I can go home far enough away from Nashville, I can get out of Nashville, but it's close enough I can drive down to it. And But, you know, a lot of times I'm listening to your show via that app, so there's no excuse. Anybody wants to listen to your radio station, they can listen to it through that app. But they, you know, just hook it up to your phone and Bluetooth it to your truck or your car, and away you go, you know, so. That's right. And you know what? You'll be getting the check after the after the show. So the the <laughs> endorsement, you'll be getting the check. Don't Don't worry. Um, oh, the whole nickel, the whole nickel, right? <laughs> That's right. I'll be sending you out your check for that, so you'll you'll be in good shape. But no, it, you know it's funny because I had um, oh John God, John Crabtree mm-hmm. used to tell me all the time, you know, you're one of us, and I'm like. I don't play music, and he says, "No, but you play us, and you you think like us." And I'm thinking, "Yeah, okay." Um, so yeah, it's well, you know, Phil, you you do think like us, and you know, you do give us this opportunity, and uh, you know, you're on the cutting edge. I mean, you were one of the first ones that I know of that, that started doing this, and and you're not only um, on the internet radio, you're also I mean, an actual radio station. And uh, a lot of times you'll find there's a lot of internet stations out there, but not a lot of actual radio stations that play in indie country. And uh, I just want to say thank you on behalf of myself as well as all the other artists. And I think if they're listening, they're probably shaking their head right now, smiling. And you have the top 20 chart, and I've made that a few times, but I'm grateful for that. And if I make that, that's great. And, you know, I, I mean, the fans love that, but to just hear yourself on the radio is uh, just an awesome thing and a blessing. And and I think they would all say the same thing. So thank you so much on behalf of all of us. Well, you're you're quite welcome, and you're you're too kind. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me ask you: in your music, you've got because you've got fire on the wire, and you've got yourself. And fire on the wire is your what you do when you're in New Jersey, and you personally is what you do when you're in Nashville. And how hard is it for you to? have the group and then yourself i mean is there does it make it tough for you it it's well i try to separate the songs that we do with fire on the wire and what i do in nashville uh that song single wide trailer um but you've played some yes uh, i've done it both you know i've done a solo version in nashville i did it up here and uh you know i um i kind of kept to keep it separate i play i like having that raw it's a rockabilly kind of sound. Us guys, we get together on Tuesday nights, generally from six to eight. And I've done a few Facebook Live things just to, you know, test the waters, and uh, I like that. Uh, you know, we need to get out and play some more. But it's hard. It's two different sounds. I mean, if you listen to it, it's two different sounds. Nashville's got a certain sound to it. It's really right. Nashville is very, very polished. Uh, the stuff in New Jersey is more of a bar kind of in your face. Which I like it. Uh, I've I've got a lot of radio play with Fire on the Wire. Uh, you know some some rock and roll kind of stations. You know that, that, that are you know reaching out to us, which I thought was kind of interesting. You know, so um, I didn't intend for that because it's really country. But it, it can be difficult to balance it between the two. Uh, but I try to I try not to. My Nashville stuff. It's different. I mean, it's just different. So I try to pick songs that 
or Fire on the Wire that's different from Nashville. But I blend a little bit. And then if I do a song in Nashville like that single white trailer, I ask the guys. You know, I wrote, I write all the songs. Uh, you know, I write all, so I own all the songs and everything. But out of respect for those guys, you know, you know, I just want to give a shout out to Tom Copsco. He's the leader of the band, and Charles Wilson's the lead guitar, and Mike uh, Bray is the uh, bass player and, and myself is the lead singer and then mark uh, benevic is the drummer but mark shows up when he can he lives a little bit further away the coolest thing to feel about fire on the wire this is like this is gonna be a crazy story here we all live within two miles of each other with the exception of uh mark uh and we were looking for a bass player uh for the last two years because we've had it, it, bass players off and on and i was at the doctor's office in phillipsburg getting a procedure done i was talking to the nurse and you know i told her i'm in music and she said my husband plays bass guitar and i said oh yeah really we need a bass player and i said where do y'all live she said we live in washington i said washington new jersey she said yeah i said where about she said behind mr music i take lessons at mr music i said are you kidding me she said no we're kind of find out this bass player we've been looking for you can throw an egg and hit his house from where they're playing every Tuesday night. <laughs> it's a small world, isn't it? <laughs> and he fits in. He fits in like a hair in a biscuit, man. He come in there and he started playing the songs. And oh man, we just have a we just have a good old time. Mike is a great bass player, and we just have fun, you know. <laughs> it's amazing how sometimes the world it's it's really a small world. I mean, you could be looking for somebody and you find them right in your backyard. Oh, that's, well, literally, it was literally in our backyard. You could see his house from uh, Tom's house. Cause, wow. like, we play in Tom's basement, his man cave. And, and um, we played out some. You know, I, this year, one of my goals be for the band is I'd like to do five or six shows. Nothing really big, but, you know, if you're in there, we used to play some DFW some, and that's fun. And last year, we did a show, um, a fair in Allentown, PA, which is not far from us. And we did, you know, a backyard barbecue and that kind of thing. But this year, we'll be a little bit more serious about it. Um, my goal is to, this year is to record another album in Nashville, to uh, do another album or EP up here in New Jersey, Mr. Music, which is only two miles from my house. It's a lot better than traveling all the way to Nashville, 900 miles away. True. And, uh, you know, and, and then playing out some. And then also this year, I want to try to do a music video. I said that last year, but, I mean, I was really busy last year, and, and you know, it costs money, lots of money. So, and it, now, my, if my wife is listening to this, she's going to say, uh uh uh. <laughs> That's what Arnold wants to do. I don't know if it's going to take place. We'll see. You know, so. It's, well, you know, being an indie artist, it, it's a tough life. It really is because there's there's so many. The sacrifices that you have to make, not just financially, which I mean is one of the biggest ones, because after you get done paying all the bills, uh, all the money that's left over goes towards your music. So, I mean, there are sacrifices, but then the other sacrifice, too, is time-wise, because when you're not working, you're either working on music or you're in the studio or you're out performing. So, I mean, it's, it's a really tight balancing act. And everybody has to be on board in order for it to work. Otherwise, it's never going to work. Right. And, you know, sometimes my family, you know, I, of course, I play my music a lot. My, my wife and family, they get tired of hearing Arnold. <laughs> but, you know, but they love me. And i tell you how, how, how you know. Is at Christmas time this year, you know, I've been needing some business cards and this, that, and the other. So I open, I, you know, I don't. It's hard to buy me something because I have everything I would ever want. I got a wife and kids and house, and very grateful and thankful, and got my health. And uh, you know, I'm kind of living a dream with this this music. And um, coming from from where I grew up, I mean, it's just really truly is living a dream. But they bought me some business cards, and they bought me a little blank holder. And then my daughter bought me one year. She bought me a little guitar that kind of glows it, you know, blinks on and off. So. When you see that, I mean, that touches your heart and your family being on board with you. And they know it's my dream. And uh, But now, don't give me a hard time. Those, those, and your family is your harshest critics. I can tell you that. <laughs> Which is good. you got to have that, you know. So. I've got, well, my, when I do the Saturday Night Sock Hop, which I love doing because I love that music, but I will subject my wife <laughs> I make her listen to the playlist that I'm going to do for Saturday night. And she looks at me and she says, does the, I, does the fact that I hate this music mean anything to you? Because she'll get up and go into another room and I'll follow her. And say, oh, no, 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 no wait, 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 that's, wait. That's dangerous. <laughs> uh, it, it's dangerous, but you know what? It's it's funny. 
and she's used to it by now. So, um, yeah, I'll I'll just follow her around and say, "What do you think of this song?" And she'll look at me and say, "Have I told you any song that I like so far?" And I'm like, "Well, no." And she says, "So why do you? What makes you think that I'm gonna like this song?" And I'm like, "Well, you might find one that you like." <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, that's funny. My, my, I kind of do my wife a little bit like that, but my wife would outright tell you that she's not a big country fan. I mean, she likes music. She's an 80s girl, 1980s girl, you know, and I am too. I like all kinds of music, but uh, my, she'll tell you, my wife is very, I'm more of a laid-back kind of guy, beat around the bush a little bit. My wife is right directly in your face. If you ever get a chance to meet her, we're complete opposites. She's a introvert which she likes to kind of read her books and stay off away from the crowd and i like to be out having fun and meeting people and i'm an extrovert you know i'm a people guy and we're just complete opposites and so um you know i get it (laughs) so who were growing up who were some of your biggest musical inspirations well when i was a kid the very first uh people i can remember hearing uh was Ernest Tubb and loretta lynn that was the very first record uh, that I could ever recall. You know, I, my family's from Kentucky, and I was born in Dearborn, Michigan, and uh, my father died when I was 43, and when he died, we moved back to Kentucky. But Ernest Tubb and Loretta Lynn, and my stepfather died when I was 15, so I kind of had a rough childhood going up and, you know, working through all that. But uh, Ernest Tubb and Loretta Lynn, uh, you got uh, Don Williams, Alan Jackson, uh, John Anderson. I do a lot of John Anderson's, the Charlie Pride, uh, you know, uh, Jim Ed Brown. But probably my favorite artist of all time is Conway Twitty. And uh, so for me, when I got a chance to meet LaDonna and knowing that she wrote that song, I'm so tired of being something that means nothing to you, it's a Conway Twitty song. When I found out that, well, how I met her is through Facebook. A friend of mine, I mentioned something on Facebook about wanting to record back in 17, 2017. And she said she had a friend in Nashville, which is LaDonna. And that's how I met LaDonna. We got to talking and telling LaDonna my story. And, and then she said, oh, by the way, Arnold, she said, uh, she, she asked me the same question. I told her Conway Twitty. And she said, me and Joni Twitty kind of grew up together. And I about dropped the phone. I said, are you kidding me? She said, no. She said, uh, we grew up together. And you know, I've written one of the songs and everything. And uh, so those are the people that inspired me. Now, you know, I like all kinds of music, Phil, but I, I have to say I'm that Merle Haggard, George Jones. You know, I'm that old school country and you can hear it in my my songs you know that i that i do so so how hard is it for you to because fire on the wire is more rockabilly than what you do when you're in nashville and you write the music for fire on the wire and also for yourself and how hard is it for you to sit down and say okay i'm gonna write i'm gonna write a song for fire on the wire and then say i'm gonna write a song for myself so how hard is it to separate the two? Because, you know, if you're doing two different styles of music, and I mean, I know that they're similar. I mean, rockabilly and country, but <coughs> they're similar, yet they're not similar. And well, how hard is it for you to write a song, a rockabilly song, and then go and write a country song without having any of it bleed over? Well, how I kind of, you know, I, I really don't set out to write one song or the other. I just kind of write what's in my heart. And after I write it, I I know the personality of my guys. You know, Tom's got a certain personality, and all of us have our own personality, and, and I know what's going to fly in the band. And uh, if it's too mushy, bushy gushy which you listen to a lot of my Nashville stuff, it's ushy gushy stuff, I call it, you know, that really hardcore. And then we do some of that, but uh, then I know that's probably not a, a song for Fire on the Wire. Okay. But generally, if I think it might be a Fire and a Wire song, how I determine that is I just take it to practice, say, hey, boys, what do you think about this? And we play it. And if they, they get a big smile on their face afterwards, and hey, you know, that's one of our songs, you know. And and uh, we've got a few ones we're working on now, and most of our songs are kind of upbeat. I, we do have a few slow ones as well, but, um, you know, I, I just kind of, I really don't write for one or the other. I just kind of, you know, I kind of test the waters and I take it to them. Sometimes... Like my eyes are only on you. That's not a fire on a wire song. I tried it a few times. We just it just doesn't work for us. That's a Nashville song. You know, I tried it and tried it, tried it. 
uh, that song, which uh, "Saying Goodbye," is a song I wrote for my wife as she say, said goodbye to her mom as her mom was passing. That's not a fire in a wire song. <coughs> Single wide trailer. That's a bar raising, have, have a good time kind of song. That could be both. You know, uh, the cowboy dance. That's not a fire on the wire song. No, I, uh, I, w- so, I would think the cowboy dance would be a fire on the wire song because that's the song that gets stuck in your head. And when I play that song, I I curse you all day long, and I, <laughs> I hate you for the day because it gets stuck in my head, and that's all it runs through my head the whole for the entire day. And so I say thank you very much, Arnold, and I will get back at you. Um, well, you know. Well, I'd say it's not. You know, we haven't, that's not one of the songs we gravitate to, though, you know, when we play. I mean, we'll play it some, but the guys don't really get into it as much as I'd like them to. But, you know, it's the nature of the beast. So you kind of fill them out. You get their temperature, you know, and how they how they think, you know, and, uh, and just, you just roll with it, you know. Well, I, did, I think it's great that you've got all that, and... What new projects do you have in the works right now? I, I know you just got done with. I know you just got done with some projects, but uh, what are you working on right now for yourself and also for Fire on the Wire? Well, I uh, like to say this year I've probably got ten songs already written that I want to record in Nashville. Probably in April, I'm guessing. And at Fire on the Wire, we're we're just now going through some song selections, and I've written, we've written a few songs and uh, narrowing some things down. But we'll probably do five song, five to ten songs up here as well. Okay. And then, uh, like I say earlier, I'd like to do a music video. So I've been talking to LaDonna about helping me with that. That's going to be interesting because I've never done that before. I'm kind of nervous about that. And the video I want to do is to the Cowboy Dads because I think that's the one that, right or wrong, that you either like that song or you, you like it or you hate it. I mean, I've had some people are just absolutely get disgusted by it and they got some people that like it and it's all about dancing it's got nothing's not dirty it's nothing like that but right. you know people read it in the songs you know so that's what i've got going as far as projects go this year which is that's a that's a full that's a full play plus trying to play a few more shows this year i mean i'm working a full-time mining job and you know i got a daughter graduating high school i got another daughter is in college and she turns 21 this year and my 25th anniversary and her Hundred twenty one. Her big thing is she wants to drink an apple martini. Well, I never drank and drank an apple martini in my whole life. I have no idea. I've never drank an all, uh, martini at all in my life. <laughs> so I've got things going, man. But uh, yeah, we got we got a lot of projects going on here. Well, you're going to have to keep me posted on what's going on, and keep me abreast of what's happening. And I wish you nothing but the best of success with everything that's going on, because you got—I mean, you got your hands in a little bit of everything there, and uh, they definitely have you running around. That's for sure. Well, you know, I was down in Kentucky over the weekend, and I caught your sock hop down there, and I got to go see uh, Stanley Walker, uh, which he's a rockabilly kind of guy. He's in the rockabilly Hall of Fame when he did that Rock and Angel. You played it yep. on your Saturday night show, and he played it at the. At the dance, I took my mom out dancing. That was wonderful, and um, just want to say, I mean, I like both your shows, the Black Dog Show, as well as your uh, your Saturday Night Sock Hop, and uh, also wanted to just say, you know, Tammy Dove with uh, ISSA, yep. National Singer Songwriter Association, and what they're doing is wonderful. I call that the new CMA, uh, American Music Association. I mean, they're the real deal, and Stephen. Uh, Adams, he's a, a writer with them. Uh, he does a Soundwave One, I think's the name of his company, and he does reviews of music. So, indie artists, if you're out there listening, reach out to those guys and Stephen, and and he's the real deal. Uh, he wrote a couple of my, on my uh, music. He does a great job writing, and uh, Miss Dove is doing a wonderful thing. And you know, I'm just proud to have be part of that organization and, and seeing what they're doing. And they have the show. I think it's August the third in, in Atlanta this year. So, I plan on. Making it down that way, so hopefully I'll see you there. I know uh, you're going to MC it, right? I'm. I am presenting two awards, and I. It, it's going to be interesting. I'm. I'm going to tell you right now because I'm presenting two awards, and I'm going to tell you: do not sit in the front row when I'm up there presenting the awards. Okay. I'm just. I'm just <laughs> warning you. <laughs> Why you get sick? <laughs> does the term projectile vomit does that mean anything to you? So I'm, I'm just. I'm warning you. Do not sit in the front yeah. row. Sit about maybe I don't know ten rows back, 
because I do I am not good in front of crowds. I'm really not. I I can I have no problem talking behind a microphone, so I mean as long as I don't have to see anybody, I'm fine. But you put three people in front of me and I'll stand up there with my mouth open and drool. So it's going to be interesting. And then she told me that I have to be dressed up and I have to wear a suit. And I said, I don't own a suit. And she said, well, you're going to have to get one. So then I asked her, I said, do I have to face the audience or can I face the wall? And she said, no, we, we prefer you to be facing the audience. So, yeah, it's it's going to be an adventure. And well, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody down there, meeting people and uh, just being part of the whole the whole thing. I mean, it's going to be a wonderful event, and what they're doing is, I, I think they're kind of reinventing the CMA and AMAs, and it's going to be a real deal. And I know they, they're all kind of genre. It's not just country, but you know, I get on their website a lot and, and support them, and I just want to give them a shout-out and say thank you for what you're doing and, again, supporting real indie music, you know, all, all forms of, and all types of music. So I, I appreciate that. Oh no, I I love what she, I love what they're doing. I mean, I I love Tammany, and you know, every time she comes through because she lives in Atlanta and she goes up to Nashville all the time. So I'm right in dead in the middle, and so uh, we are like the the old days, you know, with the wagon trains where they would stop halfway. Well, we were that. So <laughs> everybody on their way down to Atlanta or Florida, they always stop by here and say hi. And if they don't, I yell at them for not stopping by. Well, that's uh, they're doing. Both you guys are doing a great, great job for the indie scene. And uh, as artists, we appreciate that. We really do. And um, I'm glad to see that. I was looking. I've been saying that <clears throat> somebody needs to do that. Start an organization. <clears throat> excuse me. Start an organization. Um, you know, to kind of beef things up because. You know, things are not going exactly the way I'd like to kind of see things. And uh, you know, the they give you know, a true artist, you know, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to be um, just great looking. You can be just an average guy, an average gal, get up there and have great talent and be able to show that truth to the world, you know, and um, and that's what they give that platform. They kind of level things out, and, uh, and we appreciate that. Well, I agree because, you know, unfortunately, Nashville, it's all style over substance. It doesn't matter whether you can sing. It doesn't matter whether you can play, and all it matters is how you look and indie music the thing i love about indie is it's all it's all substance over style it doesn't matter what you look like it doesn't matter how old you are it's all about whether you can sing or not and to me that's that's the most important thing if you can sing and if you can perform um because you know what looks change everybody gets older everybody you're not going to look the same way you did when you're you know, when you're 20, when you become 40, you're not going to look like that anymore. And so it it's just unfortunate because Nashville just uses everybody like they're dancing chickens. It, yeah, you see that a lot. And, you know, you got to have that really pretty. And there's nothing wrong with being really pretty or very handsome. But there's a lot of artists that don't, you know, uh, there's a lot. Look back in the old school country. A lot of those guys and gals. They weren't the best looking things, but boy, they sure could put out some music. And uh, it's all about the music and well, and it's about the fans. I mean, you got to touch the heart. If you can't reach out and touch the heart, I mean, you can just a singer. I mean, you got to be able to touch those people. And, that, and I try to do that through my Facebook page. I, feel, I, I share a lot of my personal life with people so they can see who the artist is. And then I'm a real guy. You know, I'm trying to make a living. And if I write a song, it's hopefully a, bit of a song they can relate to and maybe live through. And uh, so that's very, very important. And then the IFSA gives those it's kind of real, kind of leveling things back out again, you know, and, and gives that voice to just a common person. And and I like that, you know. I think and so. uh, I just want to say thank you to those guys as well as yourself. Well, I I I love what Tammany's doing. I think that it's something that's definitely needed. And hey, speaking of music, did you happen to see the fiasco that they called the halftime show last night on um, during the not so Super Bowl? No, you know, I, as you know, I was in Kentucky the last few days. I had to go to the UK for Mining Engineering Foundation board meeting, and then I went down to West Kentucky. And so I was driving last night. I got home at 10 o'clock after, after the Super Bowl, so I didn't get to see any of it. You say you saved yourself a lot of grief, and you saved yourself a lot of headache because 
Um, it was, oh, my God, it was probably one of the worst halftime shows I ever saw. I couldn't decide whether it was cold in the stadium or hot in the stadium because Adam Levine was taking his clothes off. And I forget who the rapper was, but he came out on stage in a mink coat. So I didn't, uh, you know, one of them was hot. The other one was really cold. So uh, huh. it was it was a very uncomfortable scene watching Adam Levine take his clothes off. Yeah. You know, Phil, I, I asked some of the guys here at work, I met the quarry this morning, and I asked some of the guys what they think about the Super Bowl, and they said kind of the same thing. They said that it was kind of a... They thought it was kind of boring, and the commercials were awful, and the halftime yeah. show was not, you know, not that good. And you know, I I didn't see any of it, so I can't even make a comment on it. You know, I didn't even watch any of it. So you're I don't know, lucky. But, you're uh, lucky. You're not the first one that said that. <laughs> you know, there's guys here were saying the same thing. <laughs> you know, you consider your consider yourself blessed because the game was terrible. I mean, I know you wanted to see New England win, and they. No. <laughs> yeah, no. No, okay. I, I did not. Okay. I like this Terry Hare. I'm not a fan of the Patriots. <laughs> oh, okay. Um I didn't care who won because I didn't I didn't care for either team. It was a snooze fest though because everybody was saying, Oh, you know, this was a defensive game. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> It was just two terrible teams playing each other and neither team deserved to be there and there there was no defense. There was no offense, but there was no defense. I mean, it's not one of those Super Bowls that kept you at the end, you know, kept you glued to the edge of your seat. This was, sure. you know, yeah. you had to keep yourself, do everything you can to keep yourself awake during the game. Wow. Well, one thing I want to say, too, is uh, talking about going back to music and thing. I don't know if I mentioned uh, Melanie Book Randall, but I want to mention her uh she and I collaborated. She was my first songwriter that I ever uh, collaborated with, and uh, she was on your show, I guess about what, a couple months ago, or something like that. Yeah. And after the show, we were texting. And I just said, "Hey, good job," you know, and and I uh, told her what was going on in my personal life at the time, and we kind of she wrote you know, she wrote some lyrics, and I wrote the chorus, and we did a song. So maybe that might be one of the songs that we we do this you know, this year. I don't know. I've reached out to her, but that song you played a while ago, with Tina Gibson. That yep. you just played right before my interview. Uh, I guess you you were saying that she wrote that song, and uh, what a what a pretty song, what a pretty. I mean, just uh, she does such a great writer. Uh, she's a great writer, and how could you? I think that song by Lori Lynn. Yeah, I, I bought Lori Lynn's record. I listen to it all the time, and Melanie's a great songwriter. So I just want to give her a shout out. If she's listening here today. I I well, you know, I love Lori. She's she's like my sister, and um, is so. I play all of her music, yeah. But no, well, Mel you, Melanie sorry, is Melanie's a fantastic songwriter. Well, Rob Rob Ansley, uh, you know, he and I got to be buddies. You know, he was his interview. He, his first interview with you was the same day you played me for the first time uh, back in 2017. That's how I got to be friends with Robbie, and he has his own show and. Yes. So it's kind of funny. I kind of see you as kind of like the earlier version of uh, country music. You know, back when the stars were just coming up. I kind of feel like we're a family. Whoa, well, and we are. Uh, you, your your show provides that family atmosphere for all of us artists, and again, we appreciate it. You know, the first time I met at Robbie because he actually stopped by the studio and. I looked at him and I said, <laughs> and I'm, I think Rob, he's probably listening right now. So, um, but I looked at him and I said, thought you'd be taller. <laughs> so, <laughs> but no, Rob, Robbie's a great guy. I, I like Robbie. His music is good. I always enjoy playing him and I always enjoy talking to him. And I, I wish him nothing but the best of success with his show that he's got going. And I, I just think it's great because I look at all these artists like Amber, who's got her TV show that she's trying to get off the ground. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just think it's great. Um, yeah, and then there's all the artists, the indie artists out there who are having roles in movies and on TV shows. And when people talk about, you know, when people say that country music's dead, I'm like, no, it's not dead. You just have to look for it. That's all. And But... I mean, country music, indie country, is really beginning to pick up steam. And when you've got artists out there who are in movies and getting themselves out there in front of people, like it, show, it shows me that people are listening and people are paying attention, and that's the most important thing. 
Absolutely, and uh, we appreciate uh, all the opportunity you give us because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be coming together as a family. I mean, it takes somebody to kind of corral us all up, and, you know, I look at your top 20 and all those people on there. I mean, they're they're all like family to me. I listen to all the music, and, um, you know, and, and it, like I say, it's kind of exciting to see that because it's kind of like a, it's, it's, it's old but new, and it's, that, that's, that's good to see. Oh, no, I, I agree, and, you know, I... I appreciate you guys because if it wasn't for you guys, I'd be playing Polish polka in the mu- in the morning. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd be playing the bare belly polka. You know, so, um, but it works both ways, and I just think it's great. I love the music that's coming out there, and I just love the idea that everybody brings their own style and their own sound to the table. It's kind of like what country music was back in the late 60s early 70s when every you know every song was different and no matter what you were thinking no matter what you were feeling uh there was a song out there that you could relate to and that's i think that's where now where nashville has lost its way because nashville is just pushing out it's one song i mean it's yeah, one beat absolutely. and one message, and that's all they're doing. And, you know, you listen to a song like George Jones, He Stopped Loving Her Today, and that song resonates the same today as it did 40 years ago when it came out. And I'm just wondering, in 10 years from now, when is anybody even going to be playing Sam Hunt? Is every, anybody even going to know who he was? And I cannot imagine somebody listening to Sam Hunt 10 years from now saying, God, that's a great song. So, yeah. <laughs> but that's I funny. just. You know, uh, you know, that's, uh, for me, um, I would just like to be known, you know, whether my, I ever make it really big or not. You know, if, if my music gets played 50 years from now, that's, that's wonderful. Uh, that'd be just you know, that'd be a sign that I made it that it's that it's worth something. You know, I've had some artists actually record some of my songs. Uh, actually, Kenneth Booth reached out to me. Um, uh, he, he's uh, he's looking at doing uh, one of my songs, and uh, I think that's that's you know that's pretty cool when people record it is record you you know, and uh, that's an honor, it really is. Oh, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Well, Arnold. It was great having you on today, and I'm glad we had the opportunity to talk again. And you know you're welcome on any time. Well, thank you, Phil. I, I do appreciate being on the Black Dog Morning Show, and uh, you know, I always give you thumbs up and try to promote you as well. And, and again, uh, on behalf of all the indie artists uh, out there, we just want to say thank you and uh, for everything you're doing for us. Well, real quick before I let you go, if somebody wants to know more about you, if they want to find out about your music, where you're going to be performing, just about your life, what are the easiest ways for people to follow you? All right. I'm going to say Google. You can Google me and you'll find me. You can uh, Facebook me. You'll find me. Uh, Music Valley Recording Studios. The number is 615-840-8935. Uh, you can call down there and leave us a voice message. You can find me that way, or you can check me out on my website, arnoldconnolly.com. And from there, it takes you to my YouTube page. And uh, I'm very open. I probably share too much information, but you, you can find me. I'm pretty easily found, and, and you can learn more about me than just music. You can learn about my personal life as well as my mining life. So, Well, Arnold, I wish you nothing but the best of success with everything, and I do look forward to talking to you again. And we're going to close this out with the Cowboy Dance. And just so you know, we're going to be rebroadcasting at this show tonight in its entirety at 11.15 p.m. Eastern Time, waakradio.com, or Google Simple Radio app. Type in WAAK, and you can listen live on your smartphone or your tablet. And right after the show, it will be on my podcast, waakradio.com. Scroll down to the Black Dog Morning Show tile, and I'll have today's show and shows from the last three months. And this one will be easy to see. It's going to say, Carrie Hare, Arnold Conley. So um, it'll be easy to find. Well, thank you so much again, Phil, for having me on the show. And uh, looking forward to hearing a lot more artists on on the show and uh, seeing some great things from everybody. Well, Arnold, uh, we're going to close this out. The Cowboy Dance and... Until tomorrow, be good, be safe, God bless, have a great day, everyone, and we'll be talking to you soon. Bye. Thank you, sir.